Hey everyone, Gavin Tate here. I'm so grateful I've been able to do most of the entire book of 1 Timothy with you all through this growth book. I'm going to be able to finish it off today. I'm going to do chapter 5 and chapter 6. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to be in Titus after that. But we're almost done. Can you guys believe it? Look at this growth book. All this is done. We have made it almost through the entire year. Wow. It's incredible. How fast has this year gone by? Dear Lord, let's pray. Holy Ghost, I thank you, Jesus, for leading us in this time. God, as we've already prayed here on set, I thank you, God, that we pray for every individual listening, that your word would be highlighted to us. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher of the word. Teach us what you want us to hear. We invite you right now. Amen. So 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 4. Um, and, you know, I'm going to read this right out of the growth book today. But I'm going to go through this. Of course, I'm not going to read every single scripture. I just want to, you know, highlight a couple things. Uh, and then, you know, through your uh, uh, times and your DGs, you can continue to get deeper on this. But I want to say, first of all, how many of you want to please God? Can I just ask a question? How many of you want to please God? If you're raising your hand, that's me. If you're saying, yeah, well, of course. Well, then this first uh, four scriptures, the last sentence is what I'm going to start with. Uh, verse four, the last sentence. And then I'm going to read the previous verses before to tell you what pleases God. This is incredible. Verse four, last sentence. This is something that pleases the Lord. This is something that pleases God. What is this? Let's read it now. Verses one through four. So he says, all this, if you'll do what's above this, these are things that please God. If you want to please God, pay attention to these words carefully and seriously. Verse one, never speak harshly to older people, your elders. Don't ever speak harshly to elders. But appeal to them respectfully as you would to your own father. Don't ever speak harshly, but appeal to them. Appeal means approach it in a way with tact and with wisdom. Approach it with honor. Approach it with respect. Don't speak harshly. Tell them they've lived longer than you have. They, have. they have a lot of time on this earth. You want to approach them with honor and respect. You want to approach them with questions. You want to approach them with suggestions. You want to approach them in a tactful, uh, uh, respectful, and honorable way. Number, verse 2, treat older women as you would your own mother and treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. <whistles> That's awesome. These things please God. Remember, these things, if you want to please the Lord, here are some sure things that you can do right now with the people in your life that you know God will be smiling on your life for. This is so practical, so good. Verse 3, take care of any widow who has no one else to take care for her. How many widows? Any widow. Is there a widow that you know of? So the Bible just told us, well, wait a minute, that was just Paul. He's just speaking to the, to the church with Timothy because, you know, they, maybe they had some widows. Okay, well, maybe he was because they had some widows. That's why he's writing it. Do you know any widows? James 1.27 says this, Pure and undefiled religion in the eyes of God. So let's pause there. He's saying they're, they're, they're debating about religion and what's right and wrong and the best religion and all this. And Jesus said, God comes in and he says, if you want my opinion on what I think is pure and religion that actually matters, this is what I say. Pure and undefiled religion is to rescue the orphan and care for the widow and keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's James 1.27. Rescue the orphan, care for the widow, keep yourself unspotted from the filth of the world. So Jesus is telling all of us, we can all practice pure religion. Do you have any widows that are in your circle that you know? Are they being taken care of? And is there any way you can help? Because it pleases God. Verse 4, but if she has children... Oh my God, this is so powerful. Or grandchildren, look how practical this is. Their first responsibility, you, the children's responsibility to their parents is what it's saying. And the grandchildren's responsibility to their parents or grandparents, their first responsibility, it's God talking, is to show godliness. How do you become, how do you show godliness? 
you show godliness at home and repay your parents by taking care of them. <laughs> Every parent out there probably is going, amen, you know. <laughs> Every grandparent, come on, preach it, Gavin. Listen, I promise I'm not making this up. It's just in the Bible. I'm reading 1 Timothy 5, and God says, you want to please me? This is how you treat older people. This is how you treat younger people. You take care of any widow that you know because you're going to be blessed because it pleases me. But children are supposed to take care of their parents. Here's the deal. Most children are like, wait a minute, my parents take care of me. I understand that for a certain age, absolutely, take care of you. But you get older now. You're in your time. Your parents are getting older. We got to turn it around according to God and showing godliness is now repaying. He uses the word repay your parents by taking care of them. What does that mean? Does that mean I give them money? It might mean. Does that mean I give them a place to stay? It might mean. Does that mean I give them a car? It might mean that. Any way that means taking care of them financially, with a company, responsibility. This is very practical. And God's saying, this is something that pleases God. Okay. We're going to keep going. And it's talking now about widows. It's talking about uh, how a person prays at night. And it talks about how a person cares for their relatives. But verse 8, I want to say this. Those who won't care, 1 Timothy 5, 8, continue on this relative speech, who won't care for their own relatives. Whoa. Especially those in their own household. That's your wife, your kids, have denied the truth faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. Wow. Okay. So you're worse than somebody who's never received Jesus if you're a believer who doesn't take care of his own family. This is what I got to say to people. Well, you know, the ministry's first. Church is first. What are you talking about? Your family is your first ministry. Your family is your first ministry. Tim, Paul is telling Timothy, listen, if you don't even take care of the people in your own household first, he's trying to talk about leaders. Remember, the whole, the whole book of Timothy is about leadership. How can you try to be a leader in God's house? You got to take care of your first responsibilities, he's saying, your first ministry, your own families. And then God will empower you in order to do the things he's calling you to do outside of that as well. Your wife and your, your spouse is your first ministry. Your kids, your next ministry. Your church or the place, your job, the place where you work and where you serve, your last ministry. And then everybody else is outside of that. So you got to know what God's telling you to do, but understand the first priorities in your life. And he's saying you got to take care of those. A person who doesn't take care of them is worse than even unbelievers. Wow. So he's talking about widows, how to do that, younger widows. Let's go all the way to the, um, oh, wow. Let's go all the way to the end in verse 18 and 19 of 1 Timothy in, the, in this chapter and then go to the next. Verse 18 or verse 19. Do not listen to any accusation against an elder unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. Do not listen to any accusation. And it says an elder, but I'm talking to anybody. Unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. Now, what is he trying to say? Listen, people gossip about people all the time. And we just buy what they say. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love hopes all things, believes all things. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. You're hoping, you're believing the best about all things. You believe the best about people until proven wrong. It's, it, and this is the way we have it in society. It's the way we have it in our world. Believe they're guilty until proven innocent. That's not how this works. Believe they're innocent until proven guilty. That's the way God wants us to be. He wants us to continue to believe the best about people. So you don't just buy it because that person said it. Really? Oh, man. You know, have you ever talked to that person? Has it been confirmed? He's saying you've got to have more confirmations about this. Really, really powerful. Uh, verse 20, those who sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. This will serve us as a strong warning to others. So a lot of people have taken that verse and been like, so we got to call out everybody's sin. He's not talking about that. He's talking about it in the context of what that sin is. We could talk more about that, but just understand that's not what he's saying. He's not saying that we're doing it wrong in our churches because we're not calling out everybody's sin from the stage, okay? Um, verse uh, 22, never be in a hurry to appoint a church leader. Do not share in the sins of others, but keep yourself pure. Don't be in a hurry to appoint leadership. You see, I understand you need somebody for that position, but you don't want to be a hurry. 
You don't want to be in a hurry. God says you want to do things in peace. Remember this. Never forget this. This is where I'm going to end. Satan pressures, pushes, God leads. Satan pushes, gets you in a rush. God leads, puts you at peace. God leads with peace. Satan presses, pushes, gets you in a rush. Anxiety, confusion. God doesn't lead us that way. I pray you're touched today by this. This is a beautiful chapter. We're going to come back with uh, chapter 6 in just a little bit. God bless you today. I pray you're blessed for the rest of your week as you talk about this chapter. Get into His Word. We'll talk to you again later. Thank you, church. Thank you.